Good evening. Um, my name's Liz Rowlinson. I'm a property journalist. I work with Place in the Sun, and this is a Place in the Sun uh, revisited. Um, you might, you've probably just seen the um, the wonderful episode with Hannah and Helen um, looking for a property in Mallorca with a healthy budget of two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. But we all desperately want to know, you know, what happened afterwards. Um, it was filmed about a year ago. So, um, you know, it's what, what has happened in that time? Did, did, did the property go through? So um, I'd love to, first of all, um, Hannah, can you, I, we didn't, we sort of on, on the TV show, um, we only learned a little few details about how you, um, you know, you, you, you came into some money um, through the sad death of your father and that led you to your search. But can you just tell us a bit more about, you know, when you first started, um, thinking about buying a property was it before that or you know has this been a long-held dream I think realistically it, it was only going to be an option um obviously recently um as you know I don't know what you've seen but uh yeah so my dad sadly passed away and obviously having that money was important to use it in a way that I wanted to kind of remember my parents um and I've always loved traveling around. Helen's always been a constant companion on, on our travels. And this seemed like the perfect way really to kind of honor their memory and have a, a lovely place to go to um, and enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy what they always worked really hard for. So that was the, the idea behind it really. Sure. And, and do you do you live close to each other? I mean, just tell us about your you've known each other for 27 years, I think. I mean, how did you yeah. meet each other? Do you work together? What's the what? How, how does it work? Helen? Um, well, we both worked for the same company. We had a really glamorous job. We worked um, her and our forklift trucks, believe it or not. Uh -huh. And uh, Hannah worked in the Maidenhead office. So we don't live that close together. And I worked in the St Albans office. But we used to chat quite a lot and um, work quite closely together, but didn't really socialise that much um, until ooh, quite a few years later, actually. And uh, we both sort of split up with each other's partners um, around about the same time and uh, said to her, fancy coming to Vegas? And she <laughs> said yes. So we went to the Vegas for New Year. And that was the start, really, of us travelling all over the place and going everywhere. Yeah. Brilliant. And, and, and so um, I believe you're, um, Helen, I don't think you're working. Are you, you're not working at the moment. Are you furloughed? Is that right? No, I'm working from home at the moment. I work right. three days a week, um, which has its challenges, but it's, it's quite nice also to have an extended long weekend. So I have the Friday and the Monday off too. So yeah, it's really nice. And how about you, Hannah? Um, yeah, um, I'm, uh, I'm furloughed again. <laughs> right. So yeah, stuck at home again for another few weeks and then back to work. Okie doke. So, so going back to the program, um, tell us, um, well, I mean, I mean, going, just going back to your, your, I mean, the background is that you've been to Mallorca many times together, haven't you? And I mean, did you, have you, you you've obviously been to Vegas, but have you explored the other bits of Spain or why was it always Mallorca that kept drawing you back? Why was that, um, Hannah? Um, so we have been to, we've been to Ibiza a couple of times. <laughs> um, I've never been to Menorca. I think Helen has. No. Um, and I don't know, there's just something about Mallorca that has kept drawing us back. I was trying to think about it actually the other day. And I think we first went about probably or 13, 14 years ago was probably the first time we went. Um, and then gone other places, but always kind of fitted in another little little extra jolly back there yeah. and kind of just always been drawn back to that one and I think it's maybe because it's an island and it just feels lovely when you get there it's got a really special feel um yeah so that's kind of been the pull of it really even though we've been all over the place mm. and all over the world we've been really lucky uh, that's the one place that's kind of you know got to my heart really Brilliant. Sort of we almost we could fit in an extra holiday we'd always it was a, a no-brainer we'd just say right let's go to Mallorca for a week or yeah know, and go to other holidays throughout the year but that's where we'd pop back to yeah brilliant and that's the, the advantage of Mallorca isn't it there's so many in normal times there's so many flights there it's just brilliant yeah. compared with um uh well the other Balearics for a start and um yeah. and um I think Helen you mentioned that you know that that part of Mallorca which is in the southwest um, just sort of north of Palma, 
um, it's it's got Magaluf, but it's got wonderful different pockets. Can you just um, yeah. tell us a bit about that, you, Helen? Yeah, well, we first went um, to Calabinas. Hannah booked the holiday because we book each other holidays every now and then, and we just ring each other up and say, right, we're going so and so. Um, and when Hannah first booked it, she said, oh, it's an hour and a half transfer. So I imagined we'd be going to Alcudia. And then when I looked on the map, I realised it was near Magaluf. And I rang and said, what have you done? <laughs> when you're there, you could be a million miles from Magaluf. It's so beautiful. It's, it really is. I don't really want everybody to know because it's so lovely. Oh. <laughs> so, um, and, and I mean, um, you had, uh, with, the, with your budget, um, Hannah, of which was sort of 250, possibly going up to 280. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I was almost surprised. I mean, I always think of Mallorca as quite expensive um, because it is a lot more expensive generally than the costas. Um, and I mean, did you, uh, before you went, um, you know, you're thinking about um, going on the programme. Did you have any idea what that budget might, you know, get you? Yeah. I mean, I've been looking around probably for about six to eight months, <clears throat> excuse me, before that. And I'd spent absolutely hours going on the Spanish sites and checking out prices. And obviously you would get a lot more for your money on mainland Spain, but that wasn't kind of the draw for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was aware what my budget would get um, and it is kind of horribly expensive out there. <laughs> um, so yeah, your money would stretch a lot further on mainland Spain, but you know, it was, it's not going to be, I didn't need a mansion. It was just no, no. somewhere really lovely. Um, so I was kind of happy that that was, even though it was more expensive, it was going to be the place for me. Yeah, sure. And how did you end up being on the, thinking about going on the TV show? It's really weird actually, because I kind of got to the decision that, right, I'm ready. I've done loads of like online research and it's time to go and, you know, get on with it now. And literally the week that I started looking around for flights to go back out there a few months later, um, this popped up on sort of, I think it was Facebook saying we're looking for people and kind of hadn't really thought about it before. <laughs> but then when I saw it, I thought well, that could be another little adventure for us. So <laughs> I just filled out the application, but I didn't really think about it too much. I just filled out the application form there and then and sent it off. Um, and then just forgot about it, if I'm honest. Didn't really, didn't really think about it anymore until I got, until I got a phone call back. <laughs> so that was, yeah, a bit out of the blue. And then you were, oh my God. I hear from anyone. <laughs> <laughs> They're often quite short noticed. What did they say? Uh, yeah, they were pretty much just said, you've been, uh, thank you for your application and we'd like to, to further it along. And uh, do you want to come and meet us for a screen test? And See how you go from there. So, like Helen, <laughs> we're off again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, quick call to Helen, and then yeah, we were booked in for a screen test to see how we sort of progress it. Really, yeah. brilliant. Did you go? When did you? Where did you go for your screen test? So we went over to Chorley Wood, so right. nice and local for Helen, and not far for me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we just both finished work a bit early and met up in the car park there and off we went <laughs> and had a really funny screen test <laughs> it was so funny wasn't it when the, when the gardener walked past the window she said just look at me don't don't look around and this gardener just kept walking backwards and forwards <laughs> well it, it really obviously worked um and then so so then how long what when when did you fly out after that when you found out you were a success so it all happened really quickly, really. Was, I think yeah. we went through the screen test around July. Right. And yeah. uh, we were on a plane at the end of September. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, in the space of a couple of months, uh, it was it was all, all systems go. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. And do you think um, you would have been unlikely to go out to Spain? Uh, you, you'd have actually not been looking at properties yourself independently if so soon, if you hadn't have been sort of pushed through on the tv show uh, no i mean i was ready to start looking at that point anyway yeah. so the timing just you know sometimes you know things feel like they just fall into your lap they fall in at the right time and this was one of those occasions where it you know it did have that feeling of it was meant to be because it mm. it all kind of fell in at the right time and it was at the time when normally i'd gone out the helen had gone out there 
uh, we like to go away kind of September time. Yeah. So even that sort of fell in perfectly to uh, to what I was doing. Really, it was brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, on, so yeah, going back to the TV program, you saw the properties, and and you. I mean, how did you find the actual filming experience? Did, was that fun or quite demanding, um, Helen? Yeah. It was really, it was really good fun. I mean, they're such a lovely team, and they made you feel really comfortable. Um, the first day, I got a little bit of stage fright, and I was, I just felt really embarrassed. And then, obviously, the when we saw the beautiful view, we both welled up. That was a little bit embarrassing, but no, it was it was really good. And it, I've got a, a better appreciation now as the amount of effort that goes in. So if a plane goes across, etc., you have to redo it. But no, the team the team were lovely. At one point, we even asked them, um, Sandy. We sort of said, "Beam me up, Scotty," because uh, we we're going to have to do some salsa dancing. So it, it was really it was really good fun. <laughs> oh, and you had Jasmine and. Um, mm. um, Maybe um, we can, you know, um, do a follow up with her at some point. But um, and so, Hannah, you um, so the offer we, we saw on the TV program that your offer was accepted. What tell us what happened then? Yeah, it's, it kind of all feels quite surreal now, really. Um, and at the time, you, you always watch this and you, you kind of feel it's going to be a bit staged. Um, and obviously a certain part of it must be and has to be. But. The actual sitting there waiting for the for the moment where they say yes or no was is also completely real, mm. and uh, I was I was really nervous and really kind of emotional as well. And like normally in real life, I don't really not really a crier, not really overly emotional in that way. But during that program, I kind of ended up booing all the time, <laughs> and Aww. that was one of those moments where we just kind of stood there sat there and we looked at each other and it's like oh that's it's real it's actually yeah. just happened so yeah it was really it's really special really special moment um I won't I won't forget it ever no, it was lovely Aww. and and then so so then it was the sort of nitty-gritty side of things um getting a, a, a lawyer sorting out the purchase how can you tell us a bit about that Hannah yeah so sort of hit the ground running as soon as uh we got home really um, we literally flew back on the day where, where the offer was accepted and then by the next week um, engaged a, a, a lawyer here to, to start proceeding um, and then in much the same way as any house sale it kind of started to take on a bit of a life form of its own it was very different like really different um, but yeah it kind of went all right the lawyer was great and I also had one in um, Yorker as well that ended up doing some of the latter stages of it uh, to help the process along. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very different process and in parts not at all what I was expecting, but what yeah, was, great what, learning. Curve. Well, yeah, <laughs> what did you find the most alien about the Spanish buying process then? Um, I think here you, you kind of um, just start all your paperwork and information gathering and then hand it all over to someone. Mm. Uh, and which was much the same, but as you get a little bit further down the process, you know, a lot of it you do a bit more yourself. So when, we, when I arrived back in Spain to do the actual purchase, um, having to go and see a notary, which was quite a oh, yeah, yeah. different experience. <laughs> um, and kind of the last minute, everything happens very, very last minute. So you're all sitting there and mortgages get exchanged and monies are going in different areas and it all kind of happens very very quickly and you're a part of it whereas generally you just get the phone call saying you're done <laughs> come yes. and get the key mm -hmm. um where it was nothing like that I had to actually be there and sit in a notary office and kind of just go with the process of all of that which is really it was very very different mm -hmm. and but how fun. is your Spanish Do, you know I mean um, have you picked up some on your trips I'm absolutely rubbish, to be honest. I, I started going to college, but it's it's just not something that comes very naturally to me. So I, when I'm out there, I will always have a go. Um, hmm. After a few glasses of wine, it's a bit easier, a bit less self-conscious. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but um, generally, I'm not very good. But I do, it is, you know, definitely on the tip list. It, it's important to, to get better at it. Yeah, you know, you, you've got the house now, learn the better. language, yeah. And what about yeah, the, was it a bit of a was it a bit of a shock to you that about having to add on you know kind of 
higher purchase costs on top of your what you paid for the property as well than the, you might expect from like buying in in the UK. Yeah, I mean that is very different. I mean you have to kind of very carefully at your budget and say, you know, knock another well, sort of knock twenty to twenty five thousand in this case off that amount that I had yeah. to to be able to accommodate all those costs. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I done the research and knew that was all coming because if you haven't then that's obviously going to be quite a big shock for someone afterwards it's, yeah it's quite because a lot. I, I think in um i think in mallorca it's about you pay i think roughly 10 percent stamp duty is that right yeah 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 in in terms of my budget i think um uh, with all the costs associated with it and the taxes and the bits and pieces that you pay i think it uh, it worked out about twenty two thousand. so right. Quite, it's quite a lot yes. uh, out of what you think you have to buy somewhere. So yeah, that is that is a bit of an eye opener, to be honest. Brilliant. And then, so when 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 was it finally yours completed? And um, so I think the offer went in on the, the day we put the offer in was about the third of October, I think. Yeah. And the actual day of sale was I think it was the eighth of December. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. So it wasn't too bad. Um, it went through kind of yeah. Well, I say reasonably painlessly. You're so excited and wanting to it all to happen, you know. And it was such a different process. Um, didn't always feel painless, but <laughs> but it was pretty good. A couple of months later, I had the keys. <laughs> and 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 then, and actually, you've been. When was it? When was your first trip? What that, then? You you planned a trip, did you, to sort of sort out furnishings and get, sort of get get it ready How, can you tell us I think I think Helen came out with you is that right yeah yeah we were you know once you've got it I'm just so eager to get back in and make it your own um so yeah I had to fly home the day of the actual sale so I got yeah. the keys and had to fly home um and then Helen and I did our usual little consulting of diaries and managed to get out there uh, the middle of January for yeah. I think it was about five days so yeah we went out then. It was good fun, wasn't it? <laughs> it was brilliant. It was so good. Was it furnished? Yeah. Um, did you? Did you? Um, I can't remember whether it came furnished. So how did you? What did you do to it? It did come furnished. Yeah, um, it was really nice. You could have just gone straight in and lived in it. It wasn't yeah. entirely my taste, so it was just a case of um, kind of getting the, the furniture cleared out, which the agent very kindly did. Samantha was brilliant. Um, and she arranged all of that so she cleared everything out and then when we got there there wasn't really very much obviously to move into so we we taken a case each <laughs> we packed some air beds and you know yeah. like, <laughs> <something to> sleep in. <laughs> so <laughs> we kind of just went out with our air beds and bunked down for a few days while we did the the rounds of the the bed shop and the sofa thing that was fine it was good fun we had we had a lot of fun <laughs> brilliant and, and and helen has it made you really want to buy a place yeah, i'd love to i'd absolutely love to and someone's got to look after hannah out there um so <laughs> yeah mule could i i've been watching the program for a, a long time and Andrew lucia always comes up and i said i've never been there and that looks really nice yeah. um so i think i would like to just go and have a look out there but not to purchase but to, just to go for a trip yeah um but no, if I was ever going to purchase, it would be in Mallorca. Because some people say that the trouble is once you've got a holiday home, you keep going back, you keep feeling you, I mean, you're you're in early day stage, but you keep feeling you have to go back to the same place because you've bought a property and you you perhaps don't explore the rest as much as much as you you might you might want. But I mean, presumably being a homeowner is a great feeling, Hannah, and you can just all your stuff's there, you can just, you know, walk in the door and it's yours. Yeah, no, exactly that. And I think partly as well, that the plan before this year happened, obviously, the plan was always really to use it more little and often mm -hmm. um, and to have those because it's so close. You know, the beauty of it is that it is literally only a couple of hours flight and yeah. 20 minutes from the airport, which is, you know, was another deciding factor in this. Um, so you can get out there so quickly that yeah. the long weekends were always going to be probably use use more if you like sort of four four days maybe here and there possibly a long one at some point but you know to have 
my friends come with me and have the lovely long weekends away. That's kind of what the plan was going to be <laughs> originally. Obviously, this year has put paid to that, but hopefully next year, moving forward, that will go back on the agenda. Mm. But it was but also Hannah, a bit you've, more little and often. Sorry, you've managed to get out four times, I think you said, which compared with um, some some other, we, we just watched an episode with the buyers hadn't managed to get out all year because of travel restrictions to the new to their new place. And that's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess you feel slightly lucky in that sense. Tell, tell us what you've been doing you know, how's it been on your trips over this year? Yeah, I've been incredibly lucky this year, I think, considering um, all the restrictions that have been in place. But yeah, Helen and I managed to get out, as I said, in January. So we spent five days there, you know, putting the place together. And Helen was brilliant. She's so helpful. I'm, I'm really glad she was there. And then I managed to get back on my own in February for about another four or five days. And then there was some more flights booked, but obviously once lockdown come in, they were all cancelled. So the, the next few kind of mini breaks were cancelled off um, and then had one booked in June. And again, I've been really, uh, and, sorry, beginning of July, been incredibly lucky. Literally, the air corridors kind of opened up at the point we were all flying out. So Helen come out again on that one and a friend Jane come with us as well. Oh. and we managed to have some time there in July and get back before quarantine and then I went out again in September uh, but had to quarantine when I come back off that one so I was very fortunate that you know work were really good and allowed me to do that so yeah I've been considering the year that we've had I, I feel really lucky to have had four trips out there yeah and definitely and the advantage of being on a managed complex is that it's sort of looked after for you, isn't it, when you're not there? I mean, what have, how have you found that? I mean, presumably you've got to, you've got to pay community charges for that, and um, and there are costs associated with with the ownership there. Yeah, so it's um, it's kind of like a gated one in as much as you know it's all enclosed. Um, mm -hmm. So you pay your community costs for it, which are 125 euros a month but you pay them quarterly. Right. It was actually a really, wasn't a bad community charge. We saw a few others, didn't we, that was- Yeah, they were higher. Kind of a lot higher, it was a lot higher. Um, and obviously the one that I've got is is really nicely look after. It's, it, the pool is beautiful and all the grounds are really well maintained. So, you know, you, you can see where your money's going. Um, and in addition to that, I think you have like the big costs sometimes. So. When I bought it, all of the stairs that were being redone with new stonework everywhere. Um, but that had already been incorporated into the previous owner's cost. So I didn't have to come into that. Um, and there will be future costs, but you get advised of that through um, your management company. So sure. And, and have you have you met any of your neighbours? Did you get a sense of who else is living there? Are they, are they, I, I imagine there's, there's quite a few Spanish with a part with holiday apartments there. Yeah, well, I think Mallorca in general is very cosmopolitan. So there's a lot of, of, of different um, nationalities there. And in mine, there is exactly the same. So there's, there's a lot of English, obviously Spanish. There seems to be uh, Spanish and German. It, it is very cosmopolitan um, and I've been really fortunate obviously this place is, is lovely anyway but it's enhanced by the fact that my neighbours are very lovely and made me very welcome so again I feel really lucky that they kind of you know the handful of them have taken me under their wing a bit um, and made me feel really welcome so that's uh, obviously an added bonus I feel really lucky mm -hmm. that they do they're really nice <laughs> And I think a lot of people go to the little beach bar, don't they? And when you've been over there, people have sort of pulled Hannah into their, their group as well and um, got to know a few more people that way too. Brilliant. And do you, do you, yeah. do you see yourself going out um, separately sometimes? Um, um, or do you, you know, you're going to let family and friends use it, you mentioned. I mean, it doesn't sound like, I mean, would, would you ever consider renting it out if you needed some... Some extra income? So, I mean, in terms of rental, it's a residential complex, so it doesn't have a tourist license. 
so right. you're okay. not able to rent yeah. it out for, for tourism purposes but obviously my friends and family can use it so um yeah I mean Helen's already kind of earmarked taking her mum out there for a long weekend oh, and my mum would absolutely um, love the view she'd love it um, oh, and, yeah, and, and then the friends as well and and what have they have you grown to love have you discovered any wonderful new pockets of, of, of the area that you, you obviously knew the area quite well but um you know have, have do you feel do you have you grown to love it even more you know since since your trips there yeah i mean yeah definitely it's so it's so beautiful there it really is um and again the plan this year was to you know do some more car rental and you know, kind of travel around the areas and, and check it all out a little bit more because generally we're a bit lazy when we go on holiday we are sort of more resort based and you know this was going to be the ideal opportunity to have a look around and mm. see all the surrounding areas so we've been to some but not nearly as much as I would have liked to mm. but hopefully again next year you know get a car car rental and off we go again <laughs> these some new places oh and we it, it, potentially do a little tour when we were coming back from ikea one day didn't we oh yeah we've got we're lost really, a few times <laughs> we got lost we've so been there's um, for quite a long time for all these little villages that was quite fun yeah. so where where's ikea in mallorca is it is it sort of near in, in that that corner of the island near yeah, where you are. Palma, so right. it's, you know it's really nice and close um so yeah we we must have gone there about six times <laughs> <laughs> bought, bought out ikea it is yep. definitely furnished by ikea um except for your sofa and your nice put from the expensive shop <laughs> yeah um so yeah it's nice and close and um, there's so many it, it's such an easy place to be because there's like a uh industrial park that's not that far away where we were able to get the beds and the sofa and everything mm. and then obviously ikea is only 20 minutes away so yeah it's it was it's, it was kind of quite easy to do. Um, what's the furniture, that? In the, um, the sofa and everything, we went in in the morning and they delivered the same day. I thought that was amazing. No 12 weeks delivery. And no, I was Mariana, just Mariana. That. No. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what Everything's... time did you deliver? Because I said, I'm flying home today and I want to see it before I go because I was leaving Hannah out there. And it arrived and then we whizzed off to the airport afterwards once we'd seen it all in situ. And it, it yeah. was, it's lovely. It looks really lovely really oh. only and um, have i mean is there isn't i mean have you any plans to do any alterations to the apartment or is it sort of I mean, it's pretty much how you want it? it it's such a great little apartment there isn't um there isn't a lot that really needs doing if i was there more i would want to do more to it but as a holiday home it's it's lovely as it is um mm. the one job i would like to do is put in some french windows in the bedroom oh yeah um, so that's kind of, you know, save up for that one now. That would be the next job because that would be really lovely to wake up in the mornings and just kind of open the door to the balcony. But it's, you know, it's lovely as it is. I don't really yeah. need to do that. Just want to, because it'd be nice. <laughs> oh, and it, have, have, has there been any surprises about being an owner of the property in Spain? Is it, I mean, it, it must be just a lovely feeling, especially with your father and things. But I mean, is there any... Um, any things that you didn't really expect that that it's thrown up um I don't really think it has to be honest um I think I don't know whether I was just really lucky again but it it has seemed a fairly seamless process um I went and opened a bank account and the lady there was really lovely and really helpful um, in terms of just running through how to to have a property there um, and the insurances and and things like that so I don't really feel that there's been anything kind of untoward that's been thrown at me no not at all it's so far touch wood <laughs> it, it's been okay well, you've had a brilliant, uh, I think taking a friend along is such a useful exercise, isn't it, for a property hunt, whether you're on the, it's on the TV show or not. And um, it, oh, yeah. you, you, it definitely was a sort of, um, you were great, Helen, uh, you know, sort of point, you're, you're playing almost devil's advocate, aren't you, sometimes mm -hmm. with pointing out pros and cons. But you, you, did you think, did you, uh, did you, you tended to agree on, on what was the best, didn't you, Helen, on the yeah. show? Yeah. 
I think, I, I mean, I know Hannah really well and, and with Hannah, she, she knows her own mind and if she likes something, you can, she hasn't got a poker face, you can tell straight away. There was one apartment we went to and as we arrived there, I thought she's not going to like this. This isn't what she wants. It was on a golf complex and, and she worked in a golf club. So it was almost like a, a busman's holiday. Bus, really. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew that was a no go. And um, there, were, there were a couple of places, the, the one up, up with the beautiful views um, mm. was just lovely. But then we, we looked at the steps down to, to the pool and I was saying, just buy it, buy it, because I loved it, I'm <laughs> rubbish. And she was going, I'm okay now, but in 20 years time, I'm like, mm, okay, because we just never think we're going to get old and sort of like mobility might be a problem. We just think we're going to be going on forever as we are really. Yeah. So, yeah future-proofing it that's a really good point because I was just going to finish up with sort of you know are there any tips that either of you would give if someone's looking for you know kind of just thinking oh I, it sounds so great I'd love to you know have an apartment in Spain I mean um use kind of thinking about the future is a very good tip but I mean what about you Hannah what would you what do you, do you think you've learned anything from it that you'd um yeah, I mean, definitely. I think obviously having your friend there that knows you so well is it's invaluable. You, it isn't a process I would, I don't mind doing things on my own, but this was one of the things where you really need someone with you mm -hmm. just to kind of either hold you back a bit in the places where you're getting a bit overexcited um, and put a bit of reality back into things. So yeah, to have a friend there to do that is, is, is definitely something that everyone should do. Um, and equally to, to maybe look at things that you wouldn't ordinarily look at. Um, and then it kind of secures you in that you've made the right decision mm. when you do choose something. So like Helen said, we went to look at the golf complex one, which was definitely not for me. But I'm glad, I'm still glad that we went there and saw it. Yeah. Because that then ever takes away the, the possibility that oh, it might have been all right, should I have gone mm. and have a look? So yeah definitely look around at some of the ones that might be a little bit out of the box because they could be the ones that even though you may not pick them they will influence your decision uh, on the one that you do and make you feel a bit more reassured by what you are buying really I think I think that's actually probably what I took away from it the most and that's what the program really helped with because there was definitely obviously a couple there that I wouldn't have looked at um, but having seen them, I didn't like them, but it actually made what I thought even yeah. lovelier. It, it really made me appreciate what I, I, I chose in the end. So yeah. it really yeah, improved what that, you really. did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, I would say that was probably quite important, really. And, and, and Helen, it'll be, you, you've learned a few things if you ever in, end up do looking for a property in Andalusia. <laughs> 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 no i'll be going to new york definitely I've, I've been up into the hills in the calavinas hills I've, I've seen my big posh house looking over the sea i've just now got to uh to finance it or rob a bank <laughs> <laughs> well if, if anyone doubts how we always get asked how things are spelt so it's calavinas is that correct that that yeah it's got a couple of spellings actually yes, but yeah I'm that's sure. the one i always use but yeah <laughs> brilliant well, look, thanks, guys. That's been really lovely to hear. And I'm, I'm so delighted you've got to enjoy your property at least some of the in this crazy year. And so we'll have to try and catch up with you in a year or so and see how things are going. Yeah, it'd be lovely. Yeah, thanks again. You're very welcome. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>